Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about trig parametric equations. Um, within trig parametric equations, so first we're going to talk about, okay, well what, what does that mean? What are these things? Um, we are also going to talk about what it means to eliminate the parameter and what the graphs of these like weird looking equations look like. So what is a trig parametric equation? So we're going to look at the definition from Wolfram Alpha because they have a great um, visual here. So parametric equations are a set of equations that express a set of quantities as explicit function of a number of independent variables known as parameters. For example, while the equation of a circle can be given by r squared equals x squared plus y squared, one set of parametric equations could be x equals r cosine t. So see, t is the parameter. That's why these are called parametric equations because they're in terms of this parameter t. So what's happening over here in this animation, on the right side, this is basically saying, hey, as t increases to 2 pi, look at what's happening to the graph. It's filling in, right? As t equals 0, there's a pair of points. As t equals, you know, pi over pi over 4, there's a pair of points, okay? So this is basically like graphing over time where the um, graph r squared equals x squared plus y squared is a circle. It's a static circle. It's there. We're not looking at, hey, over time, what happens? How does this circle get like filled out? Parametric equations allow us to do something basically graphing or plotting points over time. They also kind of allow us to break these rules of functions. Let me go back in here. They also kind of allow us to break these rules of functions, right? If you think about a function, you think about vertical line test. I can't have functions that look like certain things because a function has to pass the vertical line test. Parametric equations kind of helps get around that issue. And in fact, we're going to see some graphs in here. Not that one yet. So parametric equations, they give an equation for the x-coordinate, x is equal to cosine t, y is equal to sine t. So if we look at both of these, again, x is equal to cosine t, y is equal to sine t. Or if we want a non-trig equation over here, x is equal to negative 4 plus 7t. Now t goes from 0 to 1 as t populates from 0 to 1 or changes or increases you would see the line kind of filling in. And we'll see that um, in the advanced case. Okay, so in the intermediate, so this is also a trig parametric equation. X is equal to 4 sine t. Y is equal to 3 sine t. And look at the cool thing that we can do with this parametric equation. Could I tell you this in terms of a function? Um, not this, right? This doesn't pass a vertical line test. This thing isn't a function but it's a parametric equation. So parametric equations do a lot of cool stuff like this. And it's like, because we can break it down because we basically can like have an equation for X in terms of a parameter and an equation for Y in terms of a parameter. And we can do so many more cool things with them. So let's look at some more. So these are some advanced parametric equations, right? We can make cool stuff like this like this, and now I'm gonna play the slider so you can see. So my slider says A, but just think, um, this is just kind of a workaround. So what my A slider here is doing is just kind of allowing you to see how this graph is built over time. So as we play it, we're looking at this parametric equation here. Look how cool this is. As T increases, and as T decreases, you can see the graph like becomes created and then comes back. So all this to say parametric equations are really cool. There's a lot more things that we can do with them um, than we can basically regular functions in terms of like X and Y. Let me move everything back around. I know going from screen to screen is like weird. So those are what parametric equations are. There's like an equation in terms of T for X. There's an equation in terms of T for Y. Now remember when we graph, we graph x comma y, right? But instead of x, and I tell you, oh, x is this, y is this, and it's one point, I'm telling you, hey, x is cosine of t. Y 
is sine of t. You're like, okay, great. And I'm telling you, hey, t is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, well, as it does that, right, when t is equal to 0, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so this would be the point 1, 0. As t smoothly and continuously goes all the way to 2 pi, these set of points would populate as being a circle, okay? And that would be the graph here. So let's look at some more explicit examples too. Also, eliminating the parameter, which is the goal of today. So we're really comfortable with looking at stuff in terms of x, y, sometimes even in terms of z. Um, eliminating the parameter allows us to go from the parametric equation world kind of back into x and y world. So it's a process of eliminating the extra variable, it's usually t, um, and transforming the equation back into a function of x and y. So let's see a bunch of examples of this. So our goal here is going to be to eliminate the parameter and sketch the graph. At the end of this, we'll see all the graphs at the same time. So this is a parametric equation. x coordinate is equal to cosine t. y coordinate is equal to sine t. I want to get these guys also look to equations. I want to eliminate the parameter. I want to eliminate t. In order to do that, I have to think how do how does sine and cosine relate to each other? How could I basically combine these two guys into the same equation? And for that, I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. That is how these two guys relate to each other. And that's going to be the strategy. How do my two equations or my two trig functions that I'm using in these parametric equations, how do they relate to each other? Okay, so you're going to have to pull all of your identities out of your bag for this. So I have this. Great. Okay, well, cosine of t is equal to x. So then this would be x squared. Sine of t is equal to y. So this guy would be y squared equals 1. We've eliminated the parametric equation. We've got it now into one equation just in terms of x, y. So this guy and this guy are basically the same thing. And I say basically. Basically the same thing, just kind of in a different form. Parametric form, we call like algebraic form. Okay, we'll see this graph again at the end. We'll see all the graphs at the same time. Okay, what if we, you know, get a little more complicated than just cosine t and sine t? Well, cosine and sine still relate to each other. Cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. It's the Pythagorean identity. Okay, basically, so now what I need to do is I need to solve for cosine t. Sine t is already solved for. It's equal to y. So we already know that that's going to be y squared. We need to figure out this piece over here, so I need to solve this equation for cosine. So add 5 to both sides equals 2 cosine t. Divide both sides by 2. x plus 5 divided by 2 will equal cosine t then. Now I can substitute this in for cosine of t. x plus 5 over 2. And it's squared because cosine was squared, so then this guy is squared here. So this is the algebraic form of this parametric equation. Again, eliminated the parameter by figuring out how sine and cosine relate to each other and then solving for cosine and then plugging it in. Okay, what about x equals 3 plus 2 secant t and y equals 2 plus 4 tangent t? Okay, so I don't have sine and cosine anymore. I need to relate tangent and secant together. How do these guys relate together? Well, they do. It's just a different Pythagorean identity. 1 plus tangent squared t equals secant squared t. One of the other Pythagorean identities, okay? Cool, I have this, which means I need to solve both of these. I need to get secant t by itself. I need to get tangent t by itself. So let me solve my top equation. Oops, secant t. Subtract 3 on both sides. Divide both sides by 2. So x minus 3 over 2 equals 
secant of t. Okay, I can plug that in everywhere I see secant, which is over here. So that's going to be x minus 3 over 2. It's squared because secant was squared. So what I have for secant will also be squared. Okay, let me solve the y equation. y equals 2 plus 4 tangent t. Solving 4 tangent. So subtract 2 from both sides. Divide both sides by 4. So we have y minus 2 over 4 equals tangent of t. Okay, great. I can plug that in everywhere I see a tangent. So 1 stays 1 plus tangent now transforms into y minus 2 over 4. squared. Okay, if I rearrange this a little bit, I would have 1 equals x minus 3 over 2 squared, subtract this term, minus y minus 2, make these big parentheses, over 4 squared. Now you may recognize this form of equation or you may not, but we'll see the graph in a second and then it will be clear. And this would be finished. Algebraic form, parametric form. Again, algebraic form, parametric form. Eliminating the parameter and the parametric, writing it in its algebraic form. Okay, our last example, we're going to utilize the double angle formula. So I need to figure out how to write these guys in one single equation. So cosine of 2t, I noticed that I can probably write cosine of 2t in terms of cosine because I know that 2 cosine t, two cosine squared t, minus 1 is equal to cosine of 2t. This is just double angle formula. Double angle formula for cosine. Remember, there's three that we can choose from. Well, I wanted to choose the one that involves cosine, because now I can just straight sub in, right? Cosine of 2t is x. So cosine of 2t is x, okay? Cosine of t, this isn't cosine 2t, this is cosine of squared t, but it's still just a t difference, right? t, 2t, different. Cosine of t, 2 stays 2. Cosine of t is y. So I'd have y squared if I subbed in, minus 1. Algebraic form, parametric form, utilizing double angle formula identity to relate cosine of 2t with cosine. So again, to reiterate, the whole um, idea or strategy here is how can I relate this term with this term? What do they have in common? What's their relationship? Is there an identity that I can use that would use both of them that I can get them in terms of one equation? Think Pythagorean identity, sum and difference formulas, double angle formulas, half angle formulas, reciprocal identities. Pull out all the tools in your tool bag to figure out how can I get these two guys to relate to each other in terms of one equation, and then I can sub in x and y in their correct spots and get my algebraic form of the equation. Okay, let's go see some graphs now. So here's all the graphs of these examples that we did. Now you notice some of them have an A in there. That's just so I can show the slider and I can show the animation of how the graph um, became to be. So our first example was x equals cosine t and y equals sine t. The graph of that is a circle. The second example that we had, and actually let me go back to it so that we can see it, was x equals 2 cosine t minus 5 and y equals sine t. Great. So here's 2 cosine t minus 5 sine, sorry, comma sine t. And I have the a in here so we can see kind of how this graph is created. So as a gets bigger or smaller, you can see the graph boop comes and goes. And we can see that this was also an ellipse. Our third graph, this might look familiar, it might not, it's a hyperbola. And we can also see as a, just think of a as t, as A increases or decreases, you can see the graph is either built or deconstructed as things go away or come back. Our last example, the double angle formula. 
x equals cosine t, y equals, sorry, x equals cosine 2t, y equals cosine t. We can see that this thing looks like a parabola that somebody has turned on its side. All right, so those are all the graphs. Let's just put them all in at once. There we go. These are all the graphs of the examples that we've seen. And see, parametric equations make cool stuff. So I highly, highly suggest go play with parametric equations. They're super, super cool. They make really cool things. Um, what we learned how to do in this video is we saw examples of parametric equations. We saw what they are. You know, they're an equation for x, an equation for y in terms of this parameter t. And now t increases or t decreases. And what that does is it, it creates the points of a graph that don't necessarily have to abide by the rules of functions, right? You saw that really crazy braided thing. Um, and then we also saw, okay, well, if I have this parametric equation, how can I kind of go back to the things I, I recognize and go back to the algebraic form of the equation? And that process was eliminating the parameter. We saw to eliminate the parameter for trig equations, figure out how my x and y relate to each other, create one equation, and then sub in x, sub in y, and then you have your algebraic form. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And as always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.